الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد All praise belongs to Allah جل وعلا The peace and blessings of Allah and the prophets of Allah and the last of the messages of Allah the Imam of the messages the best of the messages Muhammad صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم Jazakum wa khair wa khair wa sisters to Rishon Islam Center, I'd like to welcome you all. Inshallah, our theme this month is Journeys to Islam. So we've asked various brothers every year, we have a month, a theme of lectures. Brother Usama and Lewis and last year, he spoke about his journey. Other brothers, Inshallah, last week we probably heard Brother Ali Lewis speak about his journey to Islam. And this is very important in terms of history for us. Okay? When we pass away, we want our grandchildren and great-grandchildren to meet Allah, the Brothers and sisters, inshallah, who took shahada, who became Muslims, how they developed, why they became Muslims, and how they contributed to the community, and so on, inshallah. So this is the reason why we have this theme every year, one month focusing on these issues, inshallah. Inshallah, our guest speaker today is Brother Zaki Thompson. Brother Zaki, alhamdulillah, Allah Ta'ala guided him and he took shahada about over 10 years ago. So, uh, since that time, he's been part of the community, married in the community, he has you know, Alhamdulillah children, he's working, he's been a great volunteer on many projects in the masjid that includes the uh, stewarding, includes security, includes the football team, it includes fundraising and so on. So today, inshallah, Brother Zaki Thompson, inshallah, is going to speak about his journey to Islam. I leave you with Brother Zaki, which is Zaki Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most gracious. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, technically, Imam Shkil just told you everything, so I don't really need to sit here anymore, do I? <laughs> okay. um, alhamdulillah, um, I, obviously everyone knows that I was non-Muslim, and when I was a non-Muslim, I didn't believe in religion. I had no faith. I had no influence in religion. Um, for example, taking my RE exam, uh, GCSEs, I copied the textbook because I had no interest in religion. Um, my parents, mashallah, who are not Muslim yet, may Allah guide them, um, taught me to be grateful for what you have. I mean, my parents were never rich or, you know, uh, they, they were the best of people that you could have who are not Muslim yet. They've always taught me to be grateful, to say please and thank you, please and thank you is, it, it costs nothing. It's, it's something that we should all be grateful for. In Islam we say love for your brother, or what you love for yourself, where my parents taught me treat others the way you want to be treated yourself. Without that, I wouldn't have been open-minded, I wouldn't have been uh, respecting everyone's religion or the, the the race that they been given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, a little background of me. Um, what can I say? Uh, I used to play for the under 16s mill, which was a, a big achievement for me back then. Many of you probably know I was into pro wrestling. That's a different story. <laughs> I enjoyed the the, uh, the achievements that I had in the uh, non-Muslim time, but taking my shahada was the greatest achievement I've ever made. Apologies, I'm a bit nervous. It's not something I usually do. I'm not really a, a spokesperson like my brother-in-law. Mashallah. That's fine. That's I'll be here for a long time. So. <laughs> if I go forward with how it started, I mean. I was kind of a loner during the school times. I mean, I don't know if many of you remember when I took my shahada. I had quite long hair down to my back. And uh, that's probably one of the reasons why I was always bullied or not quite a bit of a loner. Stuff like that. And being a loner it helped me um, achieve more instead of just being around my friends, messing about, just. My parents taught me, uh, you want something, 
you go and do it. So by the age of 13, while I was in school, I went part-time work, working in the stalls of Deckard Market, selling sofas. It was a job. I wanted uh, to buy a PC or whatever it was at the time. And with that money that I, I saved, it helped me learn about my life in general, to, to work hard for what you want. And the time I started to think about Islam was uh, the time of 2001 when 9-11 happened. During the school, when I did have some friends, they were mostly Muslims, mashallah. And mashallah, they were the, the most kindest, the respectful, basically the characteristics of a Muslim, which is mashallah, at that age. And when 9-11 happened, a lot of media blamed Muslims, blamed Islam, blamed us. And it didn't make sense. How can a whole religion be blamed for what happened then? So I talked to my friends and they made me understand that no religion, whether it's the Bible, the Quran, the Torah, the major religions in this world today have nothing to do about terrorism. And that's the truth. And it opened my eyes because they kept quoting things from the Quran, for example, killing one person, it's like killing the whole mankind. When you save one person, you save the whole mankind. So it kind of helps me learn about not just a religion, but a way of life. So with these, uh, my friends, they continued to help me uh, study Islam. They gave me books. One of them was a brief illustrated guide of understanding Islam, mashallah. If if I can say my opinion, it's one of the one of the good books that you can give a non-Muslim, not only for the scientific uh, scientific uh, information, but it also explains about death, the hereafter, what happens, what will happen to us in the day of judgment, and also a, a transliterated version of the the Quran, and I think it's very important for us to actually understand what we're reciting. It's okay to be in prayer and say Alhamdulillah Rabbil mean but what does that actually mean? If we don't understand this, then no, we can say anything and anything, but this is a great beneficial moment for me because I got to, not only did, I didn't know Arabic at the time, but it made me understand more about what Islam actually means. Islam, like I said, Islam is not just a religion, it's, it's a way of life, it's 24 hours, 7 days a week. We pray 5 times a day, that's compulsory, it's, it's something that we, we do every day. From the time we wake up, we say a morning dua, we do our prayers, we do what we need to do during the day, to the time we go to bed and we say our, our calls and the, the duas before we sleep. It's a way of life, mashallah. Near the time when I started thinking about taking my shahada, many of the old school brothers who were here about 10 years ago would know an English brother by the name of Imran or Dean. Mashallah, he took his shahada around 2005, who I was close friends with, and he helped me learn more about Islam. Back then, it was quite weird and strange to have white brothers come into the Dean of Islam. and. MashaAllah, this brother helped me quite a bit to the point where he said, why don't you come to the masjid? And I remember thinking, it's, it's, it's a mosque. How, how can I come to the mosque? But coming to the masjid and actually realizing that this masjid is open for everyone, not just for the Muslims. We can all learn whether it's Muslim or non-Muslim. So I came to the study circles every Thursday and I remember one of them being where Uncle Shahid, if you don't know Uncle Shahid, is someone who's straight to the point. He, will, he doesn't take no corners, he makes sure he gets to that question straight there. And 
the brothers who were with me in this study circle, mashallah, they welcomed me. And it's very overwhelming to get that feeling. You know, you're not really a, an outsider, you're one of us. Even though I was a non-Muslim at the time. And I remember the, the brothers coming up to me and saying that they were unsure whether I was going to take my shahada or not because of the questions that Abu Shaheed used to ask me. And there was always one question that always got to me. And the question was, what are you doing tomorrow? Being a non-Muslim, you don't really think about death, you don't really think about what's going to happen. And I just basically said to him, I'm going to go to work, I'm going to do this, 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 etc. And he said, how do you know you will not leave tonight? How do you know you will not live tomorrow? And it made me think, and the brothers were shocked, the fact that he got straight to the point. It's not just a point, it's a reality. How do we know that we're going to live tonight? How do we know we we're going to live next Ramadan? And it made me speak to each other. It made me think more about what's going to happen if I don't take my shahada. So, sadly I, I took as long as I should have and um, I came to these study circles, I met with the brothers. I kept learning, which is, mashallah, the greatest thing that I ever did. With this, uh, with uh, the, the study circles that I kept tending to, I finally met Imam Shakil, who briefed me for everything that I was taught. But when you were taught something, you listen. You don't really say, I know this, I know this, out of arrogance. And you, you explain more about if I don't take my shahada now, what will happen, why it will happen, etc. So, one of the funniest things is we were getting to the point of taking my shahada, and he actually opened up his diary and he said to me, What day do you want? I don't know if you remember that, but he, he opened the diary and said, what day do you want to take the shahada on? It, you know, it was quite amazing and quite amusing. I'm sure you probably don't remember that, but it was, <laughs> it was quite funny, mashallah. Um, we got to the point where the date was set, which was the 11th of August 2006, which makes it just over 10 years now, I'm living that. And by Allah's mercy, I got to the masjid for my group prayer. And Imam Shkul came up to me and asked if I was nervous. Like I am now, very nervous. And he said to me, do you want to take your shahada before or after a wedding? I said, out of, uh, out of kindness after the wedding because uh, two people are meant to be together, mashallah. But it kind of made me feel regretting because the longer the wedding took, the longer it's going to take for me to take my shahada, especially when I've never been to a wedding before. So that, that was the first wedding I've ever attended. So I didn't know how long a wedding was actually going to take to begin with. So mashallah, the date was set. After the prayer, after the, the wedding, I managed to take my shahada. And the welcoming I got after that was amazing. <coughs> From a loner who never have really had friends to, to a community that always gives you hugs, always welcomes you with the sun it's the greatest feeling I've ever had, ever taking my shahada. And like Imam Shmuel said, I've been grateful to be able to volunteer with this masjid for the last 10 years, whether it be in security for the Friday Jummahs, with the football team, the Lucian Islamic Center FC, or fundraising with uh, Imam Shakil or one of the other Imams, Imam Salim. We did charity walks, we've done Snowden, we've done bike rides, mashallah. I hope that I've uh, helped in some way. Alhamdulillah, um, now I'm married and I'm very grateful with two blessed children, alhamdulillah. I, I didn't know until quite a little while ago that my father-in-law actually came to my shahada, so that was an amazing feeling as well, mashallah. I just, I, I know it's short and I do apologize. It's, it's quite nervous sitting in front of all the brothers when I'm someone who's not really into this sort of field. And 
know, now, mashallah, I'm a, a night bike bus driver, which many of you have tried to come on my bus for free, which not allowed, but <laughs> keep trying, it's not going to work, but I appreciate the, uh, the kindness and the, the help that I've always been given by the brothers, and I just want to thank Allah for guiding me, and for everyone to never to stop thanking Allah, because at the end of the day, you may think you have nothing, but Allah will gives everything, even to the point that we're breathing air at this moment. And there's many who, in the graves right now, who wish they have that last breath to do that last good deed or you know, last forgiveness. So we need to remember our our Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to you know, remember our time is short. It doesn't matter if you're a baby, 60, 40, 100, your time will come very soon. And I just want to say Zakhlafer to the brothers who have kept me with reminders because while I've been driving my buses, there was a lot of fitna, especially going towards Trafalgar Square off the circus, and it's been kind of hard for me to not stay in the dean, but you need some brothers to keep pushing you, to keep reminding you. And I appreciate all the brothers who have texted me, kept me in contact with Facebook with constant reminders about this dean. I've, I've been Muslim for 10 years and I've seen brothers come, I've seen brothers go. For whatever reason, they have left the deen and it's quite sad, but we all need to stick together. Especially in this day and age of what's happening around the world. If we, we continue to ask Allah, Allah will provide. And uh, again, I apologize for making this short. And, I just want to say I love you all for the sake of Allah, whether I know you or I don't know you. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.